Welcome to Numero Uno, the very first video for TalkView.com, our new website for those who want more, more than they get from mainstream media, more chat, more thought, and more depth. Our videos look into subjects of particular interest to those who visit and post on our TalkView website. Today we will be talking about property. Specifically, we will be looking at cycles in property and the work of Fred Harrison, who has written several books based on his research into economic cycles. Harrison has succeeded where many others have failed. He has successfully predicted several major turning points in U.S. and U.K. property markets years before they happened. Many will wish they'd taken note of his work and acted on his theories. That includes people like me, who sold their properties too early and missed out on the final years of a huge boom in U.K. property. Prices did not peak until the end of a 14-year upswing just as Harrison predicted many years earlier in two books. A former journalist, Harrison began to take a strong interest in economics in the late 70s. In 1983, he published his first economics-related book, The Power of the Land. The conservative government was then in power, and Harrison sent them an early warning about a coming cyclical downturn, six years before the 1989 peak, and almost a full decade before the 1992 recession. There was still plenty of time to pre prevent it, but the warning was ignored. Harrison published the first edition of his boom-bust book in 2005, well before the recent peak. At that time, various observers, including me, were looking for a crash to start in 2005 or 2006, and to continue into perhaps 2008 to 2010. He disagreed. He believed that we were in a property bubble, but that it would go on growing through 2007. In fact, he said the market would achieve double-digit growth in 2007, and he was right. Also, he forecast, quote, Britain's housing market would stall at its peak when the ratio of average home prices to average earnings hit 6.5. That was almost the exact ratio achieved at the top in the summer of 2007. If Harrison is right about what lies ahead, unhappy property owners will include many UK buy-to-let investors who bought property in the last decade and then failed to sell before the peak. Another who missed a big opportunity will be Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who as Chancellor ignored a letter he received from Harrison in 1997. That letter predicted a peak in property and a rapid slide into depression. With the right economic policies, the UK could have avoided the bigger boom and bigger bus scenario that the country now seems locked into. Will Brown's reputation and job as Prime Minister survive a slide into a depression? I think not. And a depression in 2010 is exactly what Harrison had warned. More recently, in August 2005, as some like me were calling a top in property, Harrison told Money Week readers that the UK boom would last for another three years and would not be ending before 2008. He then updated his forecast in November last year saying, expect the worst, sell your buy to lets and invest in safe haven assets such as gold. How does Harrison do it? Well he uses an 18 year cycle. He has traced and verified the length of the cycle going all the way back to 1700 right at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. For Harrison, the length of the cycle arises partly from the way that homes are financed. He points out that 5% has been a normal mortgage interest rate for most of Britain's past, and that 5% compounded will double in exactly, almost exactly, 14 years. Put another way, if someone goes out and buys an asset, such as a house, that yields 5%, he will get his money back in 14 years, assuming the compounding of interest. Without the compounding, the time required is 20 years. Typical financing tenors for properties for the last three centuries of British history have tended to fall right within this time frame. So those who buy a home with a mortgage and pay it off before moving on will only buy one new home every 14 to 20 years. Let's look at how he uses this time frame in his cycle. The cycle kicks off when home prices have fallen to a level where rents earned by owning property can cover a mortgage to buy it. In other words, the bottom comes when it's cheaper to own than it is to rent. 
The impetus of renters swapping into owning puts into motion an upswing. Once this starts, the home buying cycle goes on for years. Rising home prices feed on themselves. As prices rise, increased home equity encourages more buying. People use the equity the market gives them to buy more expensive and bigger homes as they climb the housing ladder. Essentially, Harrison's idea is that people will go on buying and building homes and purchasing land until they bid up the prices to levels which cannot be sustained. Along the way, momentum grows, especially in land prices, which rise much faster than incomes and rent. After a period which normally works out to be 14 years, property prices reach a level where prices are simply too high and rental yields are too low and banks have exhausted all their tricks in finding ways to make prices look affordable. The high valuations choke off demand. And once the peak is in place, a three to five year slide begins, which brings prices back down to earth. The time frame for the downturn is shorter because it operates on fear rather than greed. After the turn, increasing fear and bank tightening of lending terms destroys excessive valuations faster and greed built them up.